Yes, Brother Max. Uh, smaller than I or than I okay. <laughs> David, what? Sorry? Yes, uh huh. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, don't get me on there. I'll preach a whole sermon. that will make you run the aisles, man. Don't get me on there. Don't get me on there. My best advice is to listen to Harold Seitler's sermon on Mephibosheth, all right? Because he didn't even, uh, he mentioned that one time I preached this sermon, I couldn't even finish it because there were other people shouting and running the aisles. And I said, be quiet, man. I got to finish this sermon. And then they just couldn't help themselves but keep on shouting. And then... I couldn't help myself but shout along with them. So I never got to finish the sermon, you know. So it's called Mephibosheth. In that sermon, he did finish it. There were some people who just couldn't stop shouting, and he just kept going on that one. So that's a great sermon on salvation. That's my best advice for a sermon on salvation for Mephibosheth is Harold Seitler's sermon on that one. Now, um, you mentioned, let me hear this right. You mentioned that Mephibosheth did not want to go with Zeba. Is that what you mentioned? I never, I think it's the name, never the soldiers that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, uh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, okay. So yeah, so then let's look at the book of 2 Samuel, right? Beautiful picture. Amen, beautiful picture. All right. Let's look at the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. And then, uh, let's see right here. The story of Mephibosheth. Praise the Lord. We're going to look at chapter, not 6, no, 5, 4. Seven, nine. Second Samuel chapter nine. All right, let's go line upon line, precept upon precept, as I explain each verse. <laughs> verse one, David said, Is there not yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Period? No. The first thing that you want to notice right here is that it was done for Jonathan's sake. For someone else's sake. God the Father, he didn't have to waste time for a stinking old wretch like you. Why would he show kindness for someone else like you? The only reason why God would show kindness to you is because of the Son's sake. So Jesus Christ... Because of his sake. What did Jesus say at the book of John? Man, this is such a great verse. He says that the love that you bestowed upon me, Father, put it on them. That's what he said right before he died on the cross at the Garden of Gethsemane. Instead, what did the Son receive? The wrath and hatred of Almighty God. Man, glory to God. Hallelujah, man. All right, verse 2, verse 2. This is, this is warming up for summer camp, amen? All right, all right. Verse 2, And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet. Amen. All right, amen. So what did Jesus Christ say? I, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What did Jesus Christ say? He came to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. He came to heal the sick. So that's the sickness. Who's the sick person? You. You're a sick person, man. Amen. And people don't like that. They call us Christians mentally sick. No, you're a sick person, buddy. You are so sick that Jesus Christ had to pick you up, but you're so mentally sick that you think you're all right and you don't That's need right. Jesus Christ. That's right. So then at verse 2 through 3 right here, we see that uh, a sick person, that's us. And then what did uh, David say at verse 3? Kindness of God unto him. Wow. Praise the Lord. Kindness of God was bestowed upon a sick person. 
Another thing right here is that not only are we sick that God bestowed his kindness, but we were from the house of Saul. Three times your Bible mentions translation. Translation, translated. One of them is translating from the house of Saul to the house of David. You compare that verse at the book of Colossians, wow. on, chapter 1. He translated you from the house of Satan yes, to the house of the great God Jehovah. Amen. Amen. All right, that was the best question that was asked today. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's look at verse 4. Oh, hallelujah. And the king said unto him, where is he? Yeah, yeah where are you, man? Right, uh, there is Brother Gene. Right over there. There's Gene right there, past, uh, Lord, that he's cussing out your name, lying again. Uh, there's Brother Tom. There's Max. There's Sean. There's Ralph. There was Sister Barbara. There's Sister Iris Lee. There, they were, Father, right there in, the, in those liberal schools, hanging around with the wrong crowd, taking your name in vain, uh, drinking alcohol, getting into drugs. Yeah, you see that right here, Lord? Where are they? They're in a sick place. That's where they're at. You want to pick them up? Come on. Where is he? Where is he? Right there, taking your name in vain again, Lord. Wow. Really? At that mire? Yeah, because look at the next part. It says, And Ziba said unto the king at verse 4, Behold, he is in the house of Macher, the son of Emil, in Lodabar. Lodabar right there. Lodabar. Now, I don't have the translation of this word Lodabar right here, but I think Lodabar, it means uh, not a word. I think that's what it means. It means not a word. So, another, so imagine that, that's at such a vile place that no one would even speak about it. Wow, what a blessing. Uh, King James Bible, friend, right there. It puts the word over there for a reason. Verse 6, Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. There's a great example right here. Here, here you are, man. What? This is repentance right here. I came not to call the righteous, but what? Sinners to repentance. Oh, you Christians don't believe in repentance? Yes, we do, man. Right over there, realizing that what? He knows what he is. And he knows that when he looks at God, oh God, I'm just nothing. I'm dirt. You know who Ziba is representing when we saw at verses uh, 3 through, 3 through, uh, let's see right here, 5? Mm -hmm. If you look at verse 5, then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Macher, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. So David sent to fetch him out. But who? It was Ziba. Yeah. So you know what happened at verse 5 right here? Verse 5, what happened right here? Hey, Holy Spirit, uh, let's yeah. see what, uh, let's see over here, what is uh, Sean doing today? Ah, oh, doing this and this and this. Where is he? He's doing this. And then the, uh, God says to the Holy Spirit, bring him over here, man. And then the Holy Spirit, you know what he was doing? He's still working on me. He's still moving today, friend. The Holy Spirit never left. The Bible says, Jesus said he'll send another comforter. The power of the Holy Spirit is what is present and alive today, right. even though Jesus Christ is not here with us. It's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is out searching and searching. And then what he's doing is that he's knocking on your door. And then he's saying, uh, Tom, open up. Open up. I got a message from the king. You got the wrong house. You got the wrong house. You don't know who I am. My name is Mephibosheth. My name is Mephibosheth. I got the right house. And that's that person who walks inside the church, and God's like, I'm speaking to you. And then the person's like, me? Yeah, you. He's speaking to you. And he's telling you, come on down. And the Holy Ghost, you know what he did? Bless God, he came down, and he came down like lightning, convicted your heart, and was trying to bring you through the throne of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, he was that messenger, that communication. 
And thank God that the Holy Spirit tugged on your heart in one preacher one day. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? Hey, let me show you how to get saved. And the Holy Spirit, he was bringing you. He was bringing you. He was drawing you and convicting you. And then you were being, and then you know what happened? You were going like this and like this and like this. And because you were lame, you were crippled. You say, I can't come to God. And the Holy Spirit says, you don't have to do a work. You don't have to do a thing. Let me do all the work and the process for you. You just trust and rely on me to save it, to save you, to rescue you. And man, all you had to do was put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And he did the whole work in you. And those of you who were lame on your feet are now becoming a baby Christian, learning how to walk. And now you're walking, now you're running. <laughs> Bless God. And then verse 6, we saw right here, he did reverence and said, Behold thy servant. He was scared. He was scared before the throne of God. Anyone would be scared when you come in front of the holiness of God. How many of you felt like that you can never get saved because you were too wicked? And you realized that it was hopeless. And then there were so many different religions out there. So many different religions who feel like that they have to do something more to earn their salvation. But then you know what G uh, Jesus said? Look at verse 7. Here's David. David said unto him, Fear not, <laughs> for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Ooh. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. Amen. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants. Oh man, my goodness. I got I to gotta go one at a time here. So then notice right here that at verse 7, God said that you can eat at my table. What? Continually. Amen. Continually. Eternal security, man. Amen. You're going to stay there. You can't leave his table. You're going to keep eating with him continually. Oh, hell, I just lost my salvation. I'm going to get kicked out of the dinner table, you know. Nope. You're going to eat at the table continually. And then you'll notice right here, verse 8, you're at that state. I'm a dead dog. I'm a dead dog. But that's who Jesus came for. Right. One Canaanite woman came to Jesus and Jesus said, I don't, uh, you're, uh, you know what the dogs do? And you know what that lady said? That's right. I'm a dog. Give me a crumb. And you know what Jesus said? Great is thy faith. Here you go. Amen. Yeah, you're a dog. But guess what? Because you're a dog, God had pity on you. Amen. Because you were that dog who was panting, looking at him with puppy eyes. And then God somehow saw pity with you and decided to feed you and let you eat from the palm of his hands because there's a nail print right there, buddy. Amen. And then what you're going to find out right here is that verse 9 this is a blessing. All that pertain to Saul and to his house is given to you. You came from the house of the devil and every single stinking thing that belonged to the devil yeah. is now belonging to you. Woo. You get his property. You get his land. You get his kingdom. Devil don't want to hear this part, That's folks. Right. You, get the, you get the devil's kingdom, his reign, the whole world. The God of this world is now off of his throne. And now you become the sons of God. And now you get his reign and his rulership. All that pertain to the devil is now yours. And then you look at verse 10 right here. Man, what a blessing. He tells, Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread all the way at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. You know what God has? He has plenty of sons of gods up in heaven and servants. And these mighty angels who could just uh, squeeze you with two little fingers, God says, you're going to serve them. Right. You're going to minister to them. You're going to help them out. You're going to be with them and you're going to minister to them. Whoa! Glory to God, man. Right there, man. Park it right there. Amen. And if Zeba is the Holy Spirit at verse 10, notice who's the one that brings in the fruits. It's not you. It's the Holy Spirit that's working in you. You don't have to worry about bringing the fruits. Just yield to the Spirit. Let Him do all the fruit production for you. Amen. You know what verse 11 says? <laughs> then said Ziba unto the king, 
according to all that my lord the king hath commanded the servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's son. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what, at verse 11, you know what God's servant says? You know what the Holy Spirit says? Jesus Christ said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Go down and get Robert over there. And then all of heaven cries out, All that you have said, we will do. Amen. Let's close with a word of prayer. Yeah.